Hello and welcome to the latest in my riveting series looking at Dreamcast Magazine. This is issue 5 and it was released on the 27th of January 2000. So, uh, three months after the Dreamcast had launched and we're up to issue 5. Uh, this issue is very much a product of the era. Um, you will note that the cover features several scantily clad ladies there. Um, in this age of Gamergate and uh, the objectification of women in video games and all that kind of stuff, um, I very much doubt that this kind of cover would actually, you know, wash these days. And uh, certainly with the recent news that uh, I think it was, it was it was it Play Asia or something like that. They they decided that they weren't going to stock the new Dead or Alive game in the US or something like that. I, I read something about that. Um, but yeah, bear in mind this is from the uh, from. I was going to say the 90s then, but it's clearly from the 2000s uh, being released on the 27th of January and all that. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's get on with it. Um, so the main story, as you can tell, is Dead or Alive 2, uh, a game which, again, did base a lot of its marketing on scantily clad or bikini clad women. Um, Resident Evil Code Veronica. And uh, that's pretty much it on the cover. So let's uh, let's move on. One of these nice double page Dream Arena adverts which uh, tend to dominate the magazines of the era. Uh, it's got a ca little card on it there. Uh, yeah, you can win a uh, win your X Dream. I managed to rip it there, but I'm sure that'll go back on, no problems. Okay, moving on to the contents page. Again, camera's zoomed out slightly too far for you to actually read it, but I will attempt to do my best. Uh, here there's a little bit about Jambo Safari and again Dead or Alive 2 and a feature about um, Japanese culture and gaming in Japan. Uh, we'll come to that in a bit. As ever, we've got the, the intro from the editor, Simon Phillips. More of these Dream Arena adverts and more contents. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, newscast. As with all the other issues I've looked at so far, the, the news is at the beginning of the magazine. And uh, yet, yeah, first thing is this feature on the upcoming Sega GT. It hadn't been released at this point, obviously, hence news. Uh, moving on, we have some news here about uh, Capcom doing a sequel to Power Stone, which became Power Stone 2. A uh, couple of little like snippets down here. Uh, Castlevania is delayed until the autumn, never came out. Uh, here, something here about a, um, a secret game coming from from Sega, but not really any word on what it could be. Um, Draconis of the Worm, which is uh, Dragon's Blood. Uh, a little bit there about uh, Ogre Battle. Again, didn't come to the Dreamcast. Uh, just some more little bits here. A little story about Je Death Crimson 2. And uh, this here about the Dreamcast satellite tuner, which again... Didn't didn't actually materialise. Uh, so moving on, we've got Virtual Cop coming to the Dreamcast here. The charts. Uh, if you're interested, number one in January 2000 was Soul Calibur, followed by Sonic Adventure 2, followed by You Wait for Striker, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, here we've got some news from Japan. There's an interesting story here about Konami apparently developing a football game for the Dreamcast or a soccer game which they the, the the magazine speculates could be an international superstar soccer game as we all fully well know now that never happened uh, but it was interesting at the time because it was one of the, these one of these stories where I kind of thought oh yes can't wait to see a, a, an ISS game on the Dreamcast that'd be amazing okay um what else have we got on this page uh Marvel versus Capcom 2 a little bit about that uh Bit about virtual tennis, and then some some a little story here, a little bit about um you know the let's make a pro like baseball team or let's make a pro uh, derby stallion racer that kind of thing, um and then some US news here a little box out here about uh, sort of the berserk guts rage, and interestingly um Spyro the dragon, which obviously isn't a um a Sega property but. They speculate that it could be coming to the Dreamcast here. 
Okay, moving on. PC to DC, this issue focuses on black and white. Interestingly, further on in the series of magazines, there is a development diary for black and white, the PC, ver uh, sorry, the Dreamcast version, and it gets quite in depth. And by all accounts, it was quite far along when it was cancelled. So once I get into those issues, you'll see more of those popping up. Um, but also Prince Nazim Boxing, which by all accounts wasn't very good. If you don't know who Prince Nazim was, just go on Google and have a look. He was a, a British light boxer, a lightweight boxer from the like the 90s. He was uh, quite good, but then uh, just kind of vanished. A little bit here. Uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica. Okay, moving on. We have... Uh, more news about Soul Reaver Legacy of Cain. This was actually mentioned in the previous issue. And some more about Echo the Dolphin and Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Just looking at the uh, release schedule here for the for the Dreamcast in all the different territories. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is listed here as a UK release in the spring of 2000. Uh, nothing else really jumps out at me uh, of any interest. Most of those games for the, the US and Jap Japanese release schedule actually did come out, so that's uh, not very interesting. Moving on, another advert for Shadow Man. You will realise, if you've seen any of my other videos, you will know that Shadow Man is like a running theme in these magazines because it, it appears that Acclaim put little, literally every little bit of money they had into advertising Shadow Man. Okay, uh, an update here on the Gauntlet Legends and uh, Toy Story 2. And a, a tiny preview here of Shenmue. Again, this was previewed in issue 3 of Memory Serves. And uh, yeah, so obviously the game hadn't yet come out in the UK here. Um, it was muted for a, a September release in the UK, 2000. And here, competition to win yourself some uh, some peripherals from uh, in, is it Interact or Mad Cats or somebody. And uh, I think Steve, the guy who actually sent these magazines to me, has obviously uh, had a go there and uh, joined the dots, as it were. Okay, forecast. Rayman 2, one of the best platformers on the Dreamcast. Looks really good and plays really well and is basically an upgrade of the N64 version. So that's a, a nice preview there. Four page spread for Rayman 2. Moving on. Um, one of the things that this particular magazine did was they would, I don't know how to put this without sounding derogatory, but they would take arcade games and just like say they were coming out on the Dreamcast even if they didn't actually know they were. So for example, this is Jambo Safari, which as we know, didn't come to the Dreamcast. But in other issues, they've done similar things. Uh, so they'll take the arcade machine and go and speak to some people in a random arcade and ask them about the game and then make out as if it's definitely coming to the Dreamcast, even though it probably wasn't even announced at the time. So Jumbo Safari is uh, given quite a lot of space here. There's nothing wrong with giving you know arcade games some... Some publicity, but just to using it and saying they're coming to the Dreamcast when there's no actual concrete proof is is a bit is a bit bad. Okay, this is the section I was talking about earlier about the um, the reporter who went to Japan just to see what the culture is like and what it's like to live in Japan or you know be a gamer in Japan of the of the early two thousands. It's quite interesting to read through it now with you know with hindsight, just at the differences between you know Western and uh, Japanese ways of life, really. It's a country I'd love to go to just because of, again, just because of the differences. And we think we know a lot about each other around the world through, like, media and films and things like that. But, you know, I'd love to go to Japan to see what it's like for myself. And this is kind of the, the best way that I can do that, really. Um, obviously, it's based in 2000, so it's obviously not going to be like that anymore. Um, likewise, I mean... We think we know a lot about, like, for example, the US, but at the end of the day, even though they speak English, it's a completely different country. So I'd like to go there myself just to experience it, and again, this kind of thing is uh, is really good for that. It's the small differences between our different countries that you know that make them so interesting. Anyway, moving on. Right, going back to what I was saying about the cover um, with the um, the bikini clad. Uh, move that out of the way. Bikini clad 
Um, there are like two characters. This is the kind of thing that you probably wouldn't get away with today because Anita Sarkeesian would be there banging on your door saying, get that off, you know, can't, you can't do that. And it's really just, it's it's a thinly veiled, disguised look at Dead or Alive 2, but using these images, you know. I mean, I personally don't have anything against it because it's, you know, the computer graphics and they're not real people. But I can, I can you know, I can, you can you can see what the issue is, can't you really, let's be honest. And back in... In, certainly in this era of the 2000s, uh, you know, these magazines were clearly aimed at at boys, really, at, at lads. Um, the, the, you know, game girls really weren't the target audience for this kind of magazine. So they, I, I assume they deemed it to be totally appropriate to, to put this kind of thing. There's something else a bit further on in the magazine as well, which will kind of highlight the point I'm trying to make. Um, not, I'm not some kind of like raging feminist. I'm just, you know, being a, you know, a, a sentient human being in 2016. Uh, okay, moving on, we've got a little competition here to win some walkie-talkies, if that's your bag. NFL Blitz advert. Okay, here we go, we've got the uh, the review section. Again, you won't be able to see what the reviews are because they're dead small in the corners, so I'll just read out what the scores are. If you can hear some noises in the background, um, there is probably a cruise ship going past right about now, so there'll be fireworks, and that's what you're probably hearing in the background if you can't actually hear them being picked up on the camera. Okay, first review is Crazy Taxi, a classic for the Dreamcast. An absolute gem of a game. If you if you own a Dreamcast and you don't own Crazy Taxi, you need to have a word for yourself, because it is one of the best games on the system. Okay, so this got 94%, and rightly so. Moving on, we've got Zombie Revenge, 81%. It's a pretty fun game, Zombie Revenge. It does get quite difficult, though. Maybe that's just me being rubbish at all kinds of game. Uh, Virtual Striker 2. I so, so, so wanted to like this game. Before I played it, I, you know, you see these shots. I, I mean, I'm a massive fan, fan of football, or soccer, as it's known. Um, and I was really looking forward to a killer football game for the Dreamcast. And Virtual Striker looked like it was going to be the one. I mean, I'd never played the arcade version, so I didn't really know how it played. I'd just seen shots of it, and if you show, a, a, you know, a, a, I don't know, I can't even remember how old I would have been in 2000, when was I born? 82. Um, so, what, 18? Um, you know, if you'd shown an 18-year-old me these screenshots, I would have been like, yes, this looks incredible. And then when I actually got to play it and realised it was a pure arcade game, I was, you know, more than a little disappointed. And, you know, this, th that is reflected in the score the magazine gave it, um, 78%. And they do say it looks incredible, which it does, even still today. It just doesn't play very well. It's not really a football game. Anyway, move on. Resident Evil 2, again, is a port of the PC game, I think. I think it's based on the PC version. It's not, you know, it's a bare bones port, to be honest. It's pretty much the same. And that gets 73%, again, which is probably... I mean, that score is more representative of the fact that it's a port rather than the game itself, I believe. Uh, because it's still a, a you know a corking game. If it, if this was the first time Resident Evil Two had ever been seen, I'm pretty sure it would have got you know in the 90s. But I think they were basing the score on the fact that it was just a part of the PC game with not really any improvements. Moving on, this is actually one of my favourite games of the Dreamcast, and it's a weird one because the way this is reviewed, it's as if it was imminently coming out in the UK or in a pal in the PAL territories. As we now know, it it never got a PAL release. Um, and that for the reasons for that, I'm I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it was published by Acclaim, and they were throwing loads of money behind Shadow Man. So why they didn't have enough money to launch Armada is um, is is a you know a mystery to me. Um, but yeah, it's, if you've never played it, it's a kind of like a top-down space exploration shoot 'em up game. A really really clever game. I love it. And in this magazine, they gave it eighty uh, sorry ninety one percent, which is a, a very good. And uh, just score, in my opinion. Let's carry on. Uh, okay, Evolution, World of Sacred Device. It's one of those RPG type things. I'm not a big fan of. I can see that you know, you know, I know a lot of people are. So um, yeah, I'm not going to really give my opinions. But I've got eighty percent. 
Tee Off Golf is a fun golf game. It's, you know, there's not, nothing particularly wrong with it. It's, it's all right. Eighty uh, percent. Virtual on. Uh, this is the game I got with my twin sticks, which uh, a guy called Ross sent me from Japan. And I have to be honest, even with the twin sticks, I'm still pretty dire at it. And I don't really know what I'm meant to be doing. Um, I remember I had the what I had the Saturn version, and I, I kind of felt the same. It, it's just not very intuitive. You don't really know. I, I, it, okay. My opinion is that it's very confusing, and I just end up the camera spinning round, and I'm dead, and then I'm just like, what am I doing? So yeah, that got eighty percent. And the review basically says that it's a quite a, a disappointing game. Okay, moving on. We've got three five three W Impact. And this gets the rather low score of 44%, which is quite harsh because I've got this game and I think it's really, really good. I think the animation is stupendously good and it plays really well. I'm by no means an expert when it comes to 2D fighters, but, you know, from what I've played of it, it's, uh, it's really cool. And 44% is, quite frankly, a bit of a travesty. Import reviews here, we've got a Berserk, 75%. Jet Coaster Dream, which is Coaster Works, 90%. Death Crimson 2, 53%. Star Gladiator 2, uh, that got 65%. And Bangayo, 65%. I quite like Bangayo though, so again, I don't really agree with that score. Carrying on, here we come to the Dreamcast Solutions section. So we've got NBA Showtime on NBC and Marvel vs. Capcom. I will just whiz through this because nobody's really going to be interested in what these are. Vigilante 8 Second Offence uh, and a Toy Commander walkthrough. Toy Commander is a great game, but you know, for the purposes of this video, I'll just skip past all this. Uh, moving on. Okay, this is the Interact section where you've got uh, Reader Letters. You will note that the High Score section has gone. The High Score section that was Banded in, in the other previous issues has kind of just vanished from, from the page uh, to be given over to another letter. Uh, reader reviews, we've got uh, Ready to Rumble, 96. F1 World Grand Prix gets 70%. Power Stone, 93. And Millennium Soldier gets 90%. That's slightly overzealous, I think. Giving 90% to Millennium Soldier. It's a good game. Good fun shooter, but 90%? Probably not. Uh, this is the web web section where they would you know preview different websites from the time as I said this in another video but I quite like looking at the screenshots because it shows you the, the how they would look on a Dreamcast with the weird font that the Dreamcast browser used and here we go this is the thing I was talking about earlier on about girls on the Dreamcast so this is what it says here in the left hand uh, side panel uh, it says call us perverts if you per I'll start that again call us perverts if you like but we we know you all ogle at the girls in games too. Where would Lara Croft be without your twisted minds? So it's no surprise that the Sublime Dreamcast has got some beautiful girls on it. Check them out. Uh, so basically, it's the uh, it's the very essence of the objectification of women in games. As I said before, pretty sure Anita Sarkeesian wouldn't be very pleased to see this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll move on with directory. It grows as the issues go by because obviously more games come out. DVD reviews there, we've got The Mummy and Austin Powers 2. Uh, CD reviews here, we've got Beastie Boys, uh, Virtual Fighter 2 music CD and a Primal Scream album there. Some comics down here on the on the right. I do like these sections of the uh, the gadgets that they kind of display because they are, again, very indicative of the time. Uh, so we've got a South Park toy thing here, uh, a digital voice recorder, a digital camera in the co top corner there. Let's see how many, it says how many megapixels it's got. Did we get to that point yet? No, it's got 1.5 megapixels, which is amazing. And uh, walkie-talkies. That's the second time we've seen some walkie-talkies in this issue. What's the big... Uh, Big appeal of walkie-talkies, I don't know. Multimedia speakers and a Dawn of the Dead zombie there. Next issue, out on the 24th of February 2000. Soul Reaver. And then back issues. We've already covered these. And the dream moment 
I think in the last one it was Sonic Adventure, yeah, where Sonic was running away from the the killer whale. In this one, it's uh, Soul Calibur, the final battle against Nightmare. So yeah, that is issue five of Green Press Magazine. Again, I know you can't really see a lot of the magazine because of the way the camera is positioned, but this is really the best way I can think of to do it, other than moving the camera around with my hand at the page and give everybody like vertigo or you know uh, motion sickness. I think I'll just keep doing it like this, unless anyone really really wants me to do it otherwise. But anyway, uh, that's issue five, uh, January two thousand. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, yeah, cheers.